everyone. Thanks for joining our show today. I just wanted to take a moment and say that I have a special announcement to make. I'm proud to say that our show is now sponsored by Patriot Mobile. Yes, it is. It is America's only Christian conservative wireless provider. Patriot Mobile is a company that shares our values and supports the causes that we care about, such as honoring our veterans, which you know is near and dear to my heart, helping first responders, and defending our constitutional rights. If you need to learn more about Patriot Mobile and their amazing offers, you can visit my website that is with them. It is patriotmobile.com forward slash graceful. Or you can call them. And don't forget to mention this show, Graceful. When you sign up, you'll get a special discount. They'll remove the activation fee from the bill right off the bat. So check us out and remember to put in the code graceful. Now, let's get it back to today's topic. Hey folks, this is Joe Russiello, host of the Sword of the Spirit podcast. Join us as we open up and study the precious Word of God, your King James Bible, every Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Time and Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Time, live on Spreaker or on our website at swordofthespiritpodcast.com. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Join us now for the study of the breastplate of righteousness. Ah, the breastplate of righteousness, guys. What is it? And why did Paul choose to use the similarity of the Roman breastplate? What do we even know about the Roman breastplate? Well, after some research, I found out that this thing weighed 18 pounds. It was steel. 18 pounds and then on top of that it had rivets and how they had to put it together and lace and get it all on them that was just one piece of equipment now fast forward all the way to like vietnam era like that's a lot of fast forward right but there they called at that time speaking from experience as far as veteran status the vietnam vets their breastplate is what they, what you guys know that we're using the terminology, but to us vets, it was called a flak vest. And it's F-L-A-K, flak vest. That thing only weighed about three pounds back then. Now, fast forward to when I was in during Desert Storm. That thing weighed uh, probably, I think at the last time I heard, it was about 20 pounds. And it was a flak vest, and it had steel plates in it. I mean, front, side, you even had your groin plate that you could have um, hooked on it. And uh, that thing was heavy. On top of wearing your your other gear to hold your ammo, to hold your water canteen, to, 
you know, everything that goes on that, what we call an LBE belt. But you're just like, good Lord, we put that thing on and I, I could have swore it wore, it probably weighed like 50 pounds, <laughs> you know. So now it's all a matter of present day armor is now all about the kind of material that's in it. And what you are using it for will depend on how much of the steel plates that are go in it or other material that they use in it. So the ones that we even wore during Gulf War and all the old school ones back then, it was just used to catch like fragments, uh, grenade fragments or any anything that was flying on by. It, from what I can understand, it really didn't even take the impact of of weapons to be shot at it and you're lucky if it did so you can find flak vests all over the internet you can buy them guys use them for paintball you know and those are just that's not even the real grade flak vest that we had in the military and there's different ones too according to the job that you did and now the flak vest that the Navy had was different compared to Army, you know, so it was very, 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 very different. And so Roman times, theirs was pretty heavy on top of everything else that they had to carry on them. I mean, basically, you are using this thing to be able to, everything that you have on you, you could lay out and just live on for about the next three days or a week. You know, you were supposed to carry everything, your whole house on your back. <laughs> All right. So to put on the full armor of God is described by Paul, the breastplate of righteousness. What good? Here's a question. What good is a breastplate? And more importantly, what does it have to do with righteousness? Well, we're going to find out. All right. All right. Do you guys remember the story? There's an old story in the Bible about uh, King Ahab. And he was pretty, like, pretty bad king. He was pretty evil. He was wicked. And um, this leader allowed a man to be killed just so he could have his vineyard. He wanted this guy's vineyard. And if you want to read that story, it's over in 1 Kings 21. All right. This king, and Israel always dealt with a wicked king, a good king, a wicked king, a good king. I was just like, Lord, why don't you just like, just give him a good king and call it good. I mean, but they just kept going through it. But it really, it really wasn't the Lord when I stopped and had to think about it. It was the people of Israel and then those in rule over Israel that chose all of this. So here, long story short on Ahab, guys. God prophesied that Ahab would die in this battle. Ahab decided that, well, I'm going to outsmart death. And he disguises himself and he calls in a favor to King Jehoshaphat. And he's like, hey, you be me and I'll be you. And we'll go out to battle. You wear my armor because they're going to try to kill me. Well, stupid Jehoshaphat decides to do it. And he wears his buddy King's armor, King Ahab's armor. Well, they go out and they're going to war. And their enemy, their captain, their commander, whoever it was at that time, tells all of the soldiers, hey, don't fight with anybody else. Nobody smaller, nobody greater in ranks, whatever. The goal is to get King Ahab. They're, they're chasing out and down the enemy. They see the armor of King Ahab and they think that this is King Ahab. And they're like, oh, there he is. And they're in pursuit. And they're chasing him and chasing him and chasing him. Well, finally, King Jehoshaphat, he goes, screw this. And he rips off the armor and he's like, I'm King Jehoshaphat. Well, all of the, the soldiers saw that it wasn't 
the king Ahab, and they turned back away, um, went back and left from pursuing him. But here's the catch, because see, God prophesied that Ahab would die, and that he would also die in battle. Well, there was this anonymous man who whips out a bow and shoots an arrow and then just unknowingly, like, just like, oh, coincidence, strikes the king, King Ahab, right between the scale armor and the breastplate. He got it right into one of those areas where the armor wasn't fully protecting him. And it pierced him. He bled out and died. Talk about poetic justice on an unrighteous king, right? Due to an opening in the armor. So how does that, and I'm pretty sure you guys were like, okay, where's she going with this? Ah, how does the armor protect us from that opening? And that's what we're going to go look at today. All right. So I say it is putting on righteousness. And what purpose does a breastplate serve? Well, the breastplate during the Roman times, it was a central part of the Roman soldier's armor, right? It provided protection for the torso, which was all of our vital organs, our heart, our lungs, and, and so on, right? So without this breastplate, a soldier would be just like, you're like, um, you're just open. You're, you're out there. You're asking for death right there. Any attack, you'd be gone. One shot, you'd be gone. So with a sturdy breastplate, the very same attacks will still come, but they would be ineffective and useless as blows would would bounce off that armor, right? At least during that time, because all they had was swords, spears, arrows. They didn't have like M16s and ARs and none of that stuff, right? But it's still steel. What would it have done is, uh, is a good question. Why is righteousness associated with the protective armor like a breastplate? Well, let us look up Proverbs. And I have my Bible, as always, sitting here in front of me. And I have the NIV. And I always tell all of you, whatever version you like, stick with that. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? All right. Proverbs 11, and it is verse 4. And it says, Wealth is worthless in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. So what does righteousness have to do with the breastplate? Well, it delivers us from death. There's the answer right there. So without righteousness... We leave ourselves open to just certain death. But with righteousness, just as like the breastplate, those, those fatal attacks of our enemy, they're thwarted, coming from Satan himself, trying to attack us. Our heart, what does our heart have to do with any of this? So you're saying to me, Monica, well, okay, hold on. The enemy is really not going to, like, shoot us with a gun. Okay, let's, let's back up there, guys. Satan has children that are evil. If we are children of God, don't you think that the enemy, Satan, has his children as well? The wicked. The wicked belong to Satan. You don't think that somebody can come by and uh, try to shoot you? Now, you're like, well, that's a stretch, Monica. You know, I'm really going to walk around with a breastplate? Well, no, but we're talking spiritually now, aren't we? The breastplate of righteousness. 
All right. So this is what I'm trying to get at. What is righteousness? Let's take a look at because there is a difference between righteousness and holiness. And that's a whole nother podcast. But we're going to look up today. What is righteousness? And let's go over to Psalms 119. The longest book in the Bible. Our longest chapter. And we're going to go over to verse 172. 172. Doesn't that sound odd? (laughs) All right. It says, May my tongue sing of your word, for all your commands are righteous. So what is righteousness? All of God's commands. Who are we? Children of God. What does he tell us to put on? The breastplate of righteousness. What is righteousness? All of God's commands. All right. First John 3. Flip way over towards the end. And you're going to go to First uh, John 3. And it is uh, verse 4. And it says, Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. So, what is righteousness? Sin is God, or righteousness is God's commands. What is it not? It's not sin. It's not lawlessness. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34. All right. We're going over to 15, guys. Verse 34, it says, Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. And I think it's the King James Version. It says, Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. So, what is righteousness? God's commands. What is it not? It is not lawlessness. It is not sin. And God even says, awake to righteousness. Awake to the fact that you cannot continue to live in sin and you have to follow the commands of the Lord. So, to be righteous is to do what in God's eyes? To do right in God's eyes, right? So, God's commandments are righteousness. And, just like we found out in contrast, lawlessness is sin and sin is lawlessness, right? Sin is the opposite of righteousness. That was the whole point of looking up all these scriptures. So, I was hoping that you guys caught that, that sin is the opposite of righteousness. So, to be righteous is to obey God's laws of love, right? What se- here's one what separates us from God causing him to withhold even his protection and you are like wait God will withhold his protection Isaiah 59 1 through 2 Isaiah I was looking up all these scriptures while digging into all of this guys and so I am like you going, wait, there's a lot of scripture going here, there, and everywhere. I knew this was going to be like a knee-deep study, and I couldn't just go, all right, you have to put this on to protect you from the attacks of the enemy. And you have to put it on every day. Even though I did go through that at one point with with Patreon subscribers. But now we're going through a, a deeper study into all of this. So I had to really just get knee deep. <laughs> all right. Isaiah 64. Or no, wait. I'm sorry. I'm looking at my notes. All right. Isaiah 59. Sorry, guys. Isaiah 59. And we're going to go verses 1 and 2. And it says, The Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your sins have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. So does God withhold his protection? Yes. 
because of the sin in our lives. So see, sins are actions and thought that go against God's laws, right? Because righteousness is obeying the commands of the Lord, right? All right. So since they're in conflict with God's way of living and they're harmful to ourselves and to others because of what we project on others with our anger or our words, you know, our actions, even to that point, God in his perfection and his justice, he won't associate with us if we go down the path of sin and evil. We cut ourselves off from God and his protection because God will separate us from each other because of the sin. It says, not God will. Let me take that back. Our iniquity separate us from God. God never departs. There we go, Monica. God never departs from us. We draw near to God or we draw away from God based on how we are living. If we are obeying the commands of the Lord, we are drawing near to God. But if we are cons consistently living in sin, consistent, consistently not following the ways of the Lord, then guess what? We are separating ourselves from the Lord. I take that back. If I I misspoke in my notes about we sep uh, God separates us, I should have rewritten that one. Bad, bad, bad. Now, it's interesting to see that in this same chapter, Isaiah mentions that God himself puts on righteousness as a breastplate. Look at verse, uh, I think it's 17. Let me go back to it, guys. I hate when I close my Bible up or close that book up because I'm like trying to hurry and get to the next one for you guys and end up messing it all up so thanks for waiting on me <laughs> all right we're gonna look at verse 17 it says he put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head interesting what did we just talk about last week helmet of salvation even the lord puts it on he put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak. Interesting. Interesting to notice that God himself puts on righteousness as a breastplate. But it, it may be part of what inspired Paul to use this analogy because of what Isaiah said. Ah, I just put it together. It's not even in my notes. <laughs> so this should be an easy one then. My question in here says, whose righteousness should we be wearing then? Ah, everybody says, okay, we should, be. it's the Lord, right? But what do we do? It's the Lord's righteousness. Yes, you guys are right. But let's flip over to Isaiah 64 and let's go to verse six, guys. It says, all of us have become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf. And like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Interesting, guys. So, righteousness may deliver from death. But whose righteousness, righteousness is, are we talking about? I try to say that one. <laughs> righteousness is the above scripture. Isaiah 64, 6, that one. Scripture makes it clear that it's like our individual, now that I'm kind of looking over, it's like our individual level of righteousness is on par with filthy rags. And when we're looking to protect ourselves from death, our filthy rags pretty much make for a lousy breastplate, right? Because we can't do it ourselves. All right, guys, so let's let's go over to Jeremiah 23, 6. And then from here on, we're going to be like going through like several other scriptures kind of quickly here. Because um, I have so much to get through. I have like pages of notes again, guys. 
I know I am full of notes, but believe me, I was sitting here doing this research and looking at all this. I was getting knee deep in this search. I was having a good time just going, wow, wow. Okay. It's this righteousness that God calls us to put on. And what does this righteousness actually mean? So that really got me, you know, pretty knee, knee deep into it. So, all right, Jeremiah 23, and we're going to verse 6. So hopefully that gave you a little bit of time to find it. All right, and it says, In his days Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord, our righteous Savior. All right. The Lord, our righteousness. That's what I caught in that and in this one. All right. This is the righteousness we should be wearing. All right. And here we go. We're getting ready to go through some scripture here. All right. Let's go over to um, Job. And it is Job 36. I'm going to use my Bible app because I know this is like a lot of scripture to look up. And <clears throat> just for the sake of time, guys. So Job 36 and it is verse 3, I think it is. And it says, I get my knowledge from afar. I will ascribe justice to my maker. All right. This, I'm going to bring on. Let's go through all the scripture and then I'll sum it all up. Okay. All right, Psalms 5, and it is verse 8. Lead me, Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. All right, and then Psalms 23 is, we all know that one. That is the, the Lord is my shepherd one, right? And that is verse 3. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. All right. And then we're going to go to 24 and we're going to go to verse 5. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God, their Savior. Last one in this section is Psalms 71, guys. And it is verse 16. I have found e sword and oh, there's another one that I use for knee deep studies like this where I just can e sword I had to mess with and um it's an online Bible study thing. You can look up any scripture, just type in e hyphen sword and you have to really mess with it to get to understand how to use it for studying things. But you can basically bring up any book of the Bible, look up the verse, pick any verse, it'll read it, it'll give you notes, it'll give you um, how it relates, they'll explain it. It's really good, but you got to really be able to mess with it to start understanding it and use it because it can get kind of tricky. But it is a wealth of information when you learn it and a good tool to use while you're doing deep dives like this. So I would highly recommend it. All right. Psalm 71 16 says, I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. So all of these scriptures show that true righteousness, it comes from God. It's God's righteousness. It's not our own, which must serve as our breastplate and our defense against Satan is basically what all of these scriptures that we just whizzed right through are, are basically summed up as this is what we have to do. They are, they serve us as that armor that we have to put on. They ser it serves as a defense against Satan that we have to proclaim God's righteous deeds. We have to follow after God's commands. That is putting on the righteousness. If the Lord says, 
love your enemies, then that's his command. As hard as it is to do that, it is following it. Is 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 being righteous tough? Yes. Yes, it is. Think we can ever do it? No. We can strive for it, come close to it, get up, dust ourselves off, and try, try, try again. Psalm 71, 19, it says, Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You, who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles, many, and though... He goes on to say, though you have made me see troubles, many and bitter, God, you will restore my life again from the depths of the earth. You will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. And it is God's righteousness that we have to cloak ourselves in. Without it, we cannot thwart the, the attacks of the enemy that come on us every moment. Remember, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. There's that chapter in the Bible where God, where all of the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan decided to squeeze in the line. And I don't remember where the scripture is at, but I think it was this part where, I think it was uh, when They were coming after Job. I think that's when Satan ended up appearing and saying, ah, but, you know, you've got your hedge of protection around him and everything. And the Lord had asked him from, where did you come from? And Satan says, he was roaming back and forth from one end of the earth to the other. He's always seeking for any opportunity to get us. And that's why it's so important, as we discussed last week, the helmet of salvation, because that's the thing, the one thing that the enemy uses is our salvation against us. Ah, you're not really saved. See, you do this. See, you just said a bad word. You just thought those wrong thoughts. You're so, you act out in your anger. See, so he's always looking to get into our minds. Now, if we don't put on God's righteousness, if we don't put on the breastplate of righteousness to protect our heart and say, no, that's not who I am. Because our heart is where our feelings come from too. How we express ourselves through our emotions, right? And so we need to be able to protect that so that Satan cannot use our emotions against us to cause us to sin to draw back from the Lord because of our sin. Because our sin is what separates us from the Lord. Now that we just got into feelings, now I pose this question to you guys. What other characteristics does Paul compare with a breastplate? Well, let's look at this one. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5. And let's go to verse 8. It says, But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Interesting, interesting, guys. And as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Isn't it interesting that this helmet keeps coming up? It's important if it's being brought up and the fact that the Lord puts on the breastplate of righteousness, he, he cloaks himself in it, and he puts on this helmet. Interesting. With looking at this, we know that faith and love also protect our hearts. It's part of that. The love is part of the, the emotion. The faith is what we walk and what we speak, right? Faith is both an action word and a, de- and a declaration word. It's just, It's interesting to study how Faith and love relate to uh, righteousness. See, faith faith works through love, right? Galatians, um, let's go to Galatians 5. And it's in um, verse 6. I think it is. Um, let me get to Galatians real quick. I hope that you guys are 
getting something out of this this week's study on this breastplate. All right, verse 6. Let me know in the comments if this is helping you to understand this. All right, Galatians 5, uh, verse 6. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. Back then, it did, right? The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Faith is the only thing that matters. And through love, we act. Faith and love go hand in hand because they are both an action and emotion, um, a, a, de a declaration of who we are and a declaration of who God is. All right. Remember Abraham's faith, which was shown by what God said to do. Remember when God said it was accounted to him for righteousness. Well, let's go over to uh, Romans. Romans 4. And it's in verse, I believe it's 3. Let me get to Romans 4 here. Yes, it says, what does scripture say? Verse 3. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. You can go on to look also at, um, for future references, if you're digging deep, you can go to uh, Genesis 15, 6 and also in verse uh, 22 that it gives more of a description there. All right. All right. So let's also, let's see. Let's go to actually Genesis 26 and um, let's go to verse 5. All right. I'm using my Bible app. That's why you're not hearing my Bible flip. And it's in verse 5, guys. It says, because Abraham obeyed me and did everything I required of him. Here we go. Here's the key part. Keeping my commands, my decrees. And my instructions. What are God's commands and decrees and destructions? Or instructions, not destructions. <laughs> uh, those, that is righteousness. That's what God wants us to do. Follow his commands. Follow his instructions. Follow his decrees. That's how we live a life of righteousness. All right, so faith is the motive within, right? And love, when when we act in love, it, exhi it, it love exhibits that outward act, right? And then through that, if faith is what motivates us, if we take that step to act out and love exhibits our acts, then it constitutes the perfection of righteousness just as what we just read in 1 Thessalonians. Putting on the breastplate, breastplate of faith and love. Does it make sense? I hope so. All right. Because <laughs> I saw it when I was doing this. And I'm like, okay. So, I mean, basically everything is just coming full circle in this. All right. So, how do we wear the breastplate of righteousness, guys? Well, the infamous trap, uh, chapter, Ephesians 6.13. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Take up the whole armor of God. Put it on. I have found what, while doing this knee-deep study, um... I started thinking about it and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to do this different as compared to how I did it um, on Patreon and talking about it. And the Lord began to walk me through it as far as you need to read what the breastplate is. And I'm like, okay. And then I started reading it. And then I got like really curious. And then I understood it enough to go even add it to my prayers. You know, every day when I would get up and um, have my time with the Lord. 
after I got done talking to the Lord about whatever it was, was on my heart at the moment or that the Lord had just led me to pray about, I started praying the, the, how do I say it? I started praying about wearing each piece of armor. And I was like, Lord, as I put on the helmet of salvation, may it protect my thoughts from the enemy to try to steal my salvation because I know who I am in Christ. You know, I am bought through the the blood of Jesus Christ that shed over my life, that shed over all of my sins. I am an inheritance to the Lord. I My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's how I started praying it. And then I would go down as I put on the breastplate of righteousness May I act out and proclaim through faith and through love. May it protect my heart from getting to my emotions that the enemy will not attack me, that I react in my emotions. And so I just started praying as I saw myself, uh, you know, it's almost like, oh, like what's his name? Iron Man. I just saw myself standing there and and it was like I pushed a button, you know, and then here comes this flying, you know, helmet that comes on and chink, you know, and it comes on and then chink, 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 the breastplate of righteousness comes on me. And that's how I saw it, the belt of truth. And here comes this belt, whoosh, and it wraps around my waist, you know. And it's putting on of that full armor. And that's how I was praying as I put on the belt, the belt of truth. You know, may I walk in, in truthfulness from my mouth and the thoughts that are in my head. May it be truthful words from, from the Bible. May I not believe the words of the enemy. You know, and I just start praying it. And I was just like, wow, Lord, I understand what it means to put all this on and to walk it daily. Oh my gosh, you should have seen me when I got my sword. <laughs> but we're going to save that one <laughs> for when we get to the sword of the Spirit, all right? But it really is, if you can visualize yourself getting up, having your time with the Lord, and see yourself, imagine yourself standing there as the Lord gives you each piece of armor and you put it on. Know why you're putting it on. Know what it does and that's what this series is about is to explain what each piece of armor does for us and armor we think oh yeah it protects us from the enemy okay what i mean what the knee deep stubby study stubby the knee deep study that we went through last week on the helmet of salvation I learned so much just from digging into this, and I hope you guys are too. And so that's what this is all about, is to go over all this and to help others understand what does it mean to put this armor on, and what does each piece represent, what does it do, why do I have to wear it? All right? So now that we know what the breastplate of righteousness is, Paul still gives us the command to take up the whole armor of God. Now, the obvious question is, how? Well, there's an in-depth concordance study of all kinds of scriptures concerning, like, righteousness. And there are actually 301 in the New King James Version concerning righteousness. Which really shows that servants of God in the Bible who had righteousness all had it because they followed God's way, right? Even though that may seem like a generalized statement or even a sweeping statement, it is though through a continuing and dedicated adherence that I noticed, I mean like to the letter with some of these guys, that they followed the spirit of God's law that we too can defend ourselves by doing the exact same thing. I mean, if future proofs passed and we look at what they did and it benefited them in those times, then why are we not mimicking our Bible heroes 
instead of talking about them. If Moses could do it, if David could do it, if Ruth could do it, if Esther could do it, they're no different from you and I today. They just lived in a different time frame. They were still human. So once we have we put on this breastplate of righteousness, we have to be sure not to remove it though, guys. It's not like you're actually like, you know, present day soldiers that we had to sleep in this thing. You know, and it, you take it off and you felt like you weighed one pound and your, your back was dripping sweat. Your uniform was soaked. Your t-shirt was soaked and stick it to your back. We can't remove it. And let's look up um, Ezekiel. We're going to go to Ezekiel 33. Verse 13, all right? I'm trying to get there, guys. Here we are. Easy go. <laughs> it just flows. 33. Verse uh, 13, guys. If you haven't found it, it is on page 1,342. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> okay. It says, verse 13, If I tell a righteous person that they will surely live, but then they trust in their righteousness... And do evil. None of the righteous things that person has done will be remembered. They will die for the evil they have done. But let's go to verse 14. And if I say to a wicked person, you will surely die. But they then turn away from their sin and do what is just and right. If they give back what they took and pledge for a loan, return what they have stolen, Follow the decrees that give life and do no evil. That person will surely live. They will not die. None of the sins that person has committed will be remembered against them. They have done, here it is, what is just and right. They will surely live. So see, it is living righteously. It is doing what's right even though nobody is there. I often joke around about, so do do we still have to put our blinker on even though there is no traffic within eyesight? Yes, you do it because it's right. So that's the point I wanted to make. It shows that wearing righteousness is righteousness. It's not just a one-time event, but that it requires a lifetime of action, just like they did. If you're going to live evil then guess what? You're going to pay for it. You're going to die. If you live righteously, you're going to live. Simple as that. Everybody makes it difficult. It's really not. Live right, you'll live life. So one day, guys, the war we're fighting, it'll be over. We will actually be able to take the armor of God off. And when it when it is over, we are promised the work of righteousness. It'll be peace and the effect of righteousness will be quietness and assurance forever. See, it says it in Isaiah thirty-two seventeen, And we're going to end with Isaiah thirty-two seventeen. So let me get there real quick. And verse 30, let me see, here it is. 32 verse 17. And we're going to shut this down. The fruit of that righteousness will be peace. Its effect will be quietness and confidence forever. Verse 18. My people will live in peaceful dwelling places and secure homes in undisturbed places of rest. Verse 19. Though hail flattens the forest and the city is leveled completely, how blessed you will be sowing your seed by every stream and letting your cattle and donkeys range free. One day we'll, it'll all be over, guys. But by faithfully living God's way and staying clear of Satan's, we'll find this peace, quietness, and assurance forever and ever. And with that, I hope you are able to grab something out of this. Putting on the breastplate of righteousness is living righteously.
It is following God's decrees. It is staying away from sin. It is running away from sin. I, I often bring up throughout this whole thing, um, even in the helmet of salvation, I know I brought it up, um, and even in this one, it's a perfect reminder about Joseph and how he ran when sin was there to try to lure him to the bed of another man's wife. And Joseph ran away from sin. And it's the same thing. We have to constantly be on the lookout and not let the enemy get that arrow into a place that's unguarded. Always on alert. You are walking in a battlefield. You may not see it physically, but if you were to open your eyes and walk so supernaturally that it becomes natural, then you will get up every day knowing that you cannot walk out that door without the full armor of God. And with that, have a blessed night. I hope you grab something out of this today. Have a great day, guys. Peace out. Well, hey, thank you for listening to The Graceful Warrior, the podcast where we explore the journey in life with God through grace and grit. And I hope you enjoyed this episode and actually found something valuable from it. And if you did, please leave me a review and share this podcast with your friends. You can also follow me on social media and visit my website for more content. And remember always that you are his battle axe and sword, says the Lord. With you, I will shatter nations and destroy many kingdoms. Jeremiah 5120. And until next time, have a blessed week.